All right, as I was reading through uh, some of the comments on yesterday's little goofy uh, butter attic video, uh, if you guys haven't seen it, it's called uh, uh, Don't Make My Mistakes or something like that. So a little bit of humor. Some of you guys appreciated that. But there was this one comment in there that most of them were like, ha, 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 funny, you know, hilarious type stuff. But one comment, this is from a person called, I guess, Carol Brown, 2808, says that, hey, um, I uh, have been doing this you know, sort of almost, almost six months I've been doing a carnivorous diet. I've been eating beef, butter, bacon, and eggs, uh, per guys like Ken Berry, I suppose. And, um, I'm disappointed because I had a high LDL cholesterol of 197. And then I went and got a CT scan of my heart and it came back with 40% blockage in one of my vessels and frustrated. Right. And so what I would say to that, or, you know, if, because I don't know, I don't, I don't know the details about, you know, other than what she wrote. And so first thing I would say is that number one, why are you doing the diet in the first place? You know, are, is there some sort of health issue, losing weight, uh, improving diabetes, improving pain, autoimmune disease, mental health? I don't know. I don't know why you're doing the diet. So first thing we look at is, you know, risk benefit, you know, what are the benefits of what you're doing? What are the potential risks? And if there's no benefit, like if you're doing the diet for no reason, or if you're doing the diet and there's no benefit to you, then, then why do it? I'll tell you, I'll tell anybody. If you're doing a carnivore diet and it's not benefiting you, what's the point, right? So, okay, with that out of the way, um, the other thing I would say is um, that if I were to, and, I, and I've seen myself and, and lots of others, there's people that have done a carnivore diet for sometimes many years, uh, sometimes with much higher, I mean, LDL cholesterol is, two to even three times higher than, than what uh, she is describing. And they come back with a zero uh, coronary artery calcium scan, you know, no, no, at least no evidence of disease on that particular study. And the result and the retort to that is almost always, well, it takes decades for, you know, the stuff to show up and you just wait 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, whatever. And so when you look at the converse, you know, you've been doing this diet for less than six months. I don't know how old you are now, if you're over, 40 or 50, and I'm, I'm not sure what the age is, the odds of, and depending on what your diet was before, for, for the preceding 10, 15, 20 years, most probably that, that little stenosis or calcification, that's what it is, that was found, you know, depending if it was a coronary or calcium score or a uh, uh, angiography, and it's, it's unclear from what, you, what you've uh, listed there. But that, there's a very good likelihood that that was pre-existing and it's been there for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, who knows? I mean, it depends. So, so, you know, to, to, you know, get a study with no baseline to compare it to, we don't know the direction. Is it, is it increasing? Is it staying the same? Has it increased? Is it decreased a little bit? Occasionally we see some people actually decrease it. So we don't really know. We don't know if you're getting benefits from the diet. Um, you know, what I would say, you know, and again, without any information, I would say, well, what are my overall risk factors for cardiovascular disease? And there are many, you know, diabetes, obesity, smoking, family history, hypertension, uh, inflammatory markers. Uh, and then of course, you know, your, your, your lipid mark, lipid panel, triglycerides, HDL, LDL, all of those things will have an impact on there. And the question, you know, is, is not whether or not LDL cholesterol is an independent risk factor. I think, uh, if you can see that is, and many people will, and I'm, I don't think that's unreasonable to say that condi certainly conditionally, it seems to be, but to say that uh, a rise in LDL cholesterol is not compensated by decreases in all these other risk factors going down to normal is unknown. I'll say that I, I believe that's unknown. Now, some people say, oh, even still, it's still, still the most important thing. And I think there's a lot of disagreement, uh, at least in, in some circles about that. And so we'll, you know, like I said, we'll have some, some, uh, data. Now you have heart disease. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Now, whatever you've been doing for probably 10, 20 years has led to that. And, and I don't know what, what that, uh, what that is because we can't see from the post here, but so what I would, you know, like I said, um, you know, it, it's up to you what you want to do. Obviously I'm, I'm, you know, you do, you make your own best decisions. You know, if you want to go on a medication, if you want to change diets, that's up to you. And again, I would put it in the context of risk benefit. If, you know, and I, and I see this all the time. I see people that have enormous benefit from going carnivore. I mean, enormous benefit. I mean, their life is literally worth living again. Whereas before they were like, you know, literally miserable, almost suicidal in some cases. And in those cases, you ask them, Hey, what about if your risk for cardiovascular disease has gone up commensurate with your perhaps LDL cholesterol or ApoB you know, numbers going up? And many of them will say, you know, to me, it's worth the risk. 
I would rather feel good and be happy and have quality of life rather than having poor quality of life and, and doing this. And you know, a lot of people will say, well, um, why don't you just take a drug, do the lifestyle, do the drug. That's, that's a fair, fair proposition as well. Some people don't want to do that for various reasons. The drugs do have side effects despite what you know, is portrayed by some folks. Oh, they're, they're safe, they're effective, there's no, no, no downside when clearly there are. And many people experience this. They've been on these and they've said, hey, I just don't like being on these drugs. Anyway, Carol, good, good uh, comments. Uh, hopefully this puts some, uh, some uh, insight in there. But my thought is probably that 40% blockage is probably pre-existing to your carnivore diet. Maybe not. I mean, there's, there's some cases where you can get accelerated, rapid atherosclerotic pro progression, but, but that's, that's, that's for, fairly less common. So anyway, let me know what you guys think, um, and uh, we will talk to you soon. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.